How was the two to three, you know, big goals or hurdles you guys have? Because on Friday, obviously, we've got the whole team in here to smash things out. But what I want to cover off on is because I've been looking at a lot of marketing. I've been looking at a lot of your guys' marketing, marketing that's out there in the, in the marketplace. And to be honest, I'm not saying it's your guys, but a lot of stuff I see, it just sucks. It's just terrible. And there's a few reasons why I believe that is so. So I'm going to try and cover off on this so you guys can learn how to make your marketing not suck. That's my goal for today. Now, Matt's already kind of somewhat alluded to a little bit of some of the things I'm going to be covering off on, which includes like levels of awareness and whatnot. However, keep what Matt taught you siloed into the sales realm as we transition into the marketing realm. Because I'm going to give you guys some different definitions, different ideas around it. And what Matt said was absolutely perfect. But don't try and cross pollinate the awareness levels when you're talking in sales and marketing, because there's two kind of different avenues that we're going to go down. Does that make sense for everyone? Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. So as we go through, if you do have any specific questions, yell out. We'll go through questions as we go, and then we'll go at the end. Uh, how aware, time back to the first point, is your market of what it is that you do and provide? So if it's something that's absolutely brand new, it's a very different approach that you have to have compared to something that's been marketed like crazy. Like, as you said, like marketing agencies, like gyms, like fitness, all of those sorts of things have been for that better term, like done to death, right? People have seen that. It's not like no one's, someone's like, oh, 12 week challenge. Well, never heard of that before. Like, let's, <laughs> let's do that. Sounds exciting. Like, what is that? What even is that? Right? Or people doing their ads for them. Like, people uh, have a pretty good general gist and understanding of what that is now. So, there's a couple of questions that I want you guys to write down, to think about, and pose as we kind of go through this. So, what is the mass desire that creates your market? What is the desire or outcome that they're looking for and hoping to achieve? <clears throat> so, just scribble down some ideas as we're going through this as well. Every time you do a marketing campaign, I implore you guys to ask yourself these questions as you go through it. Don't literally just chuck shit against the wall and see what sticks, right? Which some people are prone to do when it comes to Facebook ads, Instagram ads, even YouTube ads, because they think it's, it's so easy to do. But if you were spending tens or hundreds of thousand dollars on a TV ad, you wouldn't be like, yeah, I'll just put this up there. Let me just chuck this out there. Right, so next question you have is how much do these people know today about the way your product satisfies this desire? Pretty much state of awareness, right? Next question, how much do they know about the way your product satisfies this desire? And then lastly, how many other products have been presented to them before yours? Right, this is their state of sophistication. So I want you guys to think of have these three questions in your mind as we're going through this stuff for this next section. And if you have any questions specifically about how it applies to you, your business, like that'll be the time to, to kind of yell it out. Just wait for me to chuck the mic to you and then go at it. Because I know that a lot of the time I can I could easily read through all this content in like 30 minutes, but it's not going to be applicable to you guys. So I'm sure, like, does anyone here not have a marketing problem, but does anyone here think their marketing could be somewhat potentially improved upon? more so than it is now, yeah? Great, all right, awesome. You guys should just all get your marketing done by us. I ask myself all these questions all the time. I see. Okay. So this is a gentleman who basically created all of this. So I always give credit where credit is due. It's like market awareness, market sophistication. I did not come up with that. I wish I did, right? But I did not come up with that. So this is all from Eugene Schwartz, Breakthrough Advertising. Pretty much the only fundamental book of marketing that there is. Like there's many books you can go and read and all these other things, and most people pretty much rip their stuff up from Eugene. So if you go back all the way, like he is the number one person. So this is a, basically a, a little frame here for us to think of is that you know now where you are going to start with your market and where you're going to end with your product. The bridge between these two, their meeting place, is your ad. Okay, That's how we're going to basically bridge the gap for these people. So, market awareness. <laughs> this is really good, Nate. I like these slides. Thank you. As I make my slides sexy, and she just put pictures of me all over. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why she did that. All right. 
So <clears throat> let's jump into market awareness. So there's a spectrum, right? And our market is going to be along one of these, one of these points. Now, I don't want, the things that we don't want to do when we come to market awareness is number one, we're not looking to transition them across all of the way in our marketing, in our marketing campaign. But we are looking to create a campaign that is specific to one of these market levels. So as we're going through this, like you guys need to be thinking like, cool, which awareness level, which sophistication level are we going to be sitting at? So we've got the most indirect, which is unaware. Stories, secrets, things like that. Why do you think that a guy like Russell Brunson does so phenomenally well selling a landing page builder? Right, which is pretty boring, which is like WordPress, right? It's pretty basic. But because every single book, what does it have in its title? Secrets. Dot com secrets. Expert secrets. Because he is selling to a completely unaware market. That's why he does so well speaking at Grand Cardone's events. Because they all have no idea what's going on. Right? <laughs> they all go together. Like, no, like, much respect to both of these guys, but they don't, right? The people that come in are not experienced seasoned people. They're not going there to read, like, dot com secrets to learn how the internet works, right? They already have a fundamental understanding, but because people are unaware of all the other things that they could be doing, it works perfectly well for them. Then we have problem aware, solution aware, but the further up we go, the more information we need to have down here, as you can see, once you get to solution aware, that's where claims, that's where proof comes into it, which I've got a whole segment just covering off on proof, which people don't use much of. Product aware, most aware, which is then it comes down to product and price. So whenever you're going to create a campaign that's going to go out, this is not the entirety of your business, this is not indicative of every single thing that you do, but you need to choose one of these awareness levels. Not all of them, right? And there's many different things that, like with your overarching marketing, if you were quite a big company, substantial, and you had reasonable amounts to, uh, to spend on ads, you would be transitioning from here to here with content and information. Hence, that's, that is what Russell Brunson does, right? He has a, a book that's free, just pay for shipping. And then he has all the way up to here where people pay for masterminds, they pay for one-on-one -on -one consulting, they pay him stupid amounts to build a funnel, which he, he doesn't even do himself, right? He transitions them across, but that's all through stories, that's all through content, that's all through, that's the whole reason why a upsell funnel exists, why there is a product and price ladder, is to take people from here, right? The unaware people, like, People that know that they need help, like Kerry, is not is not now going to be like when he had this conversation with Matt. He's not going to be like, oh, can I please get that free ebook you spoke about? He's like, no, the ten thousand dollar package, thank you, right? Because he is aware of what he needs to do. Product and price, that's what he needs, what he needs to do. He's not going to get you know selling on the phone secrets from Matt's new book. Like that's not what what he wants to do, right? So most aware. If you guys want to write down these different levels, this is where you're going to have to try and assess where your market is at. And then we're going to take that and parlay that across into market sophistication. So it's, this is where it's just all about the Benjamin. Right? Not the person Benjamin, but the money, the dollars. Right? The $100 notes. This is where they're most wary and worried about price. But this is also where like referrals come in a lot to play as well because most referrals, I've found anyway, have limited view on what the price is. They're like, cool, Steph said I should go and train at Helix, I'm gonna go and train there. They're not like, but like, is it less than 50 bucks a week? Like, they're not worried about the price. So there are two areas that you have, is either people coming to you to price shop, because they're most aware, it's like, cool, I just want this outcome and I'm coming to see how much it is, or it's where they actually, so it's either the pro or the con of the dollars. So it's like, I don't really care, I've told you the best, I'm coming to work with you. They're the two ends of that spectrum that happen at this point in time you're probably not going to run a marketing campaign to this level of awareness. But it's good to know where most of your market is. Like that would be a referral campaign is where you would really go hard at this level of awareness if that's where you feel like your business is. But it's not going to be a marketing or advertising campaign. The next is product aware. They know of the product, but they don't want it yet. And there's seven different steps that you can go through and tasks to do in this area of awareness. So they know of it. But cool, I know I want this thing, but our competitors, what have they already done for us? Educate. Yeah, they've already educated them. They've already they've already started to instill the desire in them, right? Who here has heard other people talk about improving your sales before? 
Yeah. Cool. So today, Matt sharpened your image of that, right? Of how to produce and satisfy that product and that desire. Then we can extend the image of where and when it satisfies the desire, moving the time frames around. Introduce new proof, which is that I'm going to do a whole section on, on different areas of proof and how you can improve and put that into your marketing. Because every claim needs at least one to three proof elements. So if you make a claim, if you make a statement, if you say, hey, I hope you do this, it needs to have at least three elements of proof. Not only because that actually is what inherently drives the desire for people, but also because Facebook will assess that as well based on your quality score of your ad. And if you make all these claims, but you have no proof, basically you're a scammer, right? And you're gonna get kicked off of it, you won't be able to run any ads. And now it's a new mechanism to satisfy desire. I'm gonna dive a little bit into mechanisms more in the sophistication point, but basically it's like, great, if we know what the outcome and what they want to satisfy is, we need to give them a new something to do it. And most people are influenced by this in some way, shape, or form. So if you've ever read an ad, a piece of marketing, or wanted to go and purchase something, and you're like, oh, yeah, I've never, never really thought of it like that. I've never really applied it like that. That is generally when you're reading a unique mechanism, where you're like, oh, like I've never really thought about doing it that way. Or that sounds great. Or you get that little like flutter of excitement, because you're like, this, could be, like, this is going to do the thing I want it to do. right? This is going to be amazing. It's like me, every time I try and buy a new crypto, I'm like, this is going to be the one. <laughs> 10 million X, I'm going, to, I'm going to buy a yacht. It's going to be great. Because it's a new mechanism to satisfy that desire that I have that I want to achieve. And now it's a new mechanism that, that eliminates limitations. So again, if you've done your sales process right and you've talked to people and you know what the limitations are, you take that feedback back to your marketing. right? And you eliminate any new limitations. You help that new mechanism to be able to do that. It will completely change the image or mechanism to remove it from the competition as well. So you can remove what other people are talking about, what other people are advertising, what other people are doing, completely take that away, which gives you a whole new point of differentiation. Is that making sense? Yeah. Cool. So solution aware. What does it do? Like, I know I want what it does, but I don't know that the product does it for me. Right, this might sound like a little bit of a complex sentence, but I want what it does, but I don't know that that's the thing that does it for me. I saw like you just like your eyes closed for a second, and you're like, what? What is that? Does that make I was, sense? Like trying to picture that. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, like in Matt's example earlier, it's like I know I don't want to be fat, but I don't know what. Like, is it nutrition? Is it going to be training? Is it just some new? Is it just some new uh, new fang dangled uh, coffee diet where I just drink coffee all day and I don't eat any food? Like, I don't know what is going to be the chosen thing for me, but I know that I want that outcome. This is where most people will probably find, most of you guys will find your market in between here and the stage just before that. Because again, like people know that they want to grow their business. But if you're someone who knows you want to grow your business, you're getting marketed to marketing. Like use marketing to grow your business. Sales, use sales to grow your business. Systems, the reason why your business isn't growing is because you don't have the right systems. Structures, recruiting, you hire the wrong people, all your people suck, people are the worst, right? Find new A players. All of those different messages are coming in, you're like, I just want to grow my business. I don't know specifically which one it is going to be right now that I need to do, but that's the outcome that I want. So they're in a pool of like, they're in a pool of unawareness when it comes to what the product is that they want to have. So to do this, to step them through that process to help them in your marketing message at this stage, you need to name what the desire and or is and its solution, right? Name the desire, what they actually desire, what they want, and what the solution is. We need to prove that the solution can be accomplished. What's one way that you could prove that the solution could be accomplished? Testimonials. Testimonials, yeah, perfect. Case studies, examples. That's how you can prove that it's been done. Show the mechanism of that. It, I feel like that's a spelling error from from me, not me. Show the mechanism, right, and that it's contained in your product or service. Help them understand that it's actually part of what you do. The mechanism that helps them to achieve this is contained in what I do. Right. You guys can see that by implementing good marketing strategy, it's very similar to having a good sales script and process. Right. 
that we're, we're looking to do and achieve very, very similar things. I liken marketing and sales to kind of like golf, the best analogy I've ever heard of it, which is like great. It's like I can teach you, like I can teach you how to drive further, farther, and get onto the green in one hit. Which then means if I've done that, because all of this has been done in advance, all you've got to do good at in sales is like sales is just putting, rather than trying to have to chip onto the field from the from the fairway like 500 yards down. It's like that's much harder to try and do. But if I can teach you how to drive straight so the ball goes onto the green. And your sales process becomes that little, that little bit easier, becomes a little bit simpler to do because all of these things that we've done is that they've already started thinking of all of these things already. So when you take them through a very effective sales process like Matt can talk to you about, it's just like cook putt, like one putt in, right? The only reason that the guys have such great results is like if we let Matt's sales teams go ham on the yellow pages, they probably wouldn't get 90% conversion rates. Right? But if they have good, solid, effective marketing in place that helps address these things, then that's what helps to do that as well. It's all about ecosystem. Right? Problem where is next. This is where your prospect has a need but not a desire. This is basically problem solving what I want. Right? You need to dramatize. That's how you say it, right? Dramatize the need so much that the prospect realizes how bad they need the solution. Most of you guys are not going to be marketing at this level, but I'm just showing you the full levels of awareness, right? So again, like if you ever watch Russell Brunson pitch click funnels, it's like having a funnel is the solution to me having a business. Like that's all that I need. I'm one funnel away. If I don't have that funnel though, oh, I may as well give up and go get a job, right? <laughs> What's he doing? He dramatizes the need so much that you're like, oh my God, why didn't I have a funnel? <laughs> right? Why didn't I do that? Like, I'm so stupid. After you've gone through dot-com secrets, you realize that the internet works and you can make money on the internet. Next, you're like, oh, but now how do I do that? Oh, ClickFunnels. It's the only way to do that, right? Is have a funnel, right? Even the term funnel, he basically coined the phrase of funnel because all he did was go, mm, people are talking about websites. I really like the term websites. Let's use the term funnel. It's exactly the same as a website. No inherent difference whatsoever, right? But he dramatizes the need so much that they realize they need to go and do it. They need to go and buy it. Does that make sense for everyone? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Unaware, like, let's just not even go there. That is like me trying to get you guys to go onto the street and sell your product or service to someone just walking by. They have no desire that they're aware of that they're trying to solve, and they have no product or inherent understanding of what they're looking for. That's just like, hey, cool. Guy at the bar. You look like you need a funnel, mate. Come on. <laughs> Why not? Change your life. It's like, but I'm a fisherman. It's like, mate, don't worry. It will solve all your problems. How do you think you get the fish in the boat? Funnel. It's the only way. Does anyone have any questions when it comes to awareness? Does everyone start to understand and identify where their levels of awareness are at for their market? Yep. Anyone not? Anyone not making sense so far? Understanding of what I just talked about? Can you just go back to product away? Can I go back to the uh, analogy that's on? Again. One before that. Yeah. So they know of the product. Thank you. So again, like for yourself, that's like someone that's like, great, I want to do group training. Right? Or I want to do Pilates. I know I want to do it, but I haven't chosen. The, the place, the time, the structure that I'm going to use and I'm going to follow. Thank you. All right. Then we're going to transition in a sec, but I want to make sure that everyone's clear. So right, if I like point to you, you guys can all tell me what level of awareness your market's at right now, right? So you'll be playing along. Yeah? Cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're at the front. I've got to start somewhere. What level of awareness is your market? Um, most aware, probably. No, product aware. <laughs> product aware. Right. So, you, so remember what? Like, what did I say at the beginning around choosing levels of awareness? This is for what specifically? Sorry. This is for what specifically choosing a level of awareness? To market share. Yeah. So for a campaign. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Thank you, good sir. We'll see you soon. Thanks. Thank you. See you guys. You know you're a sales baller when you have a Louis Vuitton scarf, you know what I mean? Did he actually? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so what level of awareness would you Solution say? Solution aware. Solution aware? For a campaign that you're creating, currently running, or going to be running, 
they are solution aware. They won't have like the outcome of it, but they're not hundred percent sure if they want to do basic ads, Google ads, or whatever. Cool. Perfect. Easy. Sweet. Same. Same. Yeah. yeah. Funny. Then you same same business. <laughs> Product <laughs> aware. Product aware. Cool. Why? Because they know that Facebook ads works because their mates are all doing it. So they do as well. Okay. Cool. Interesting. Yeah. Chloe. Say solution aware. Solution aware. Spot on. Two people on their phones, Brendan and Kegel. Yeah. <laughs> Google the answer. Google the answer. <laughs> what level of awareness are search posh clients? Go. Um, coming through my paid advertising funnel, they're incredibly solution aware. Solution aware. Awesome. Kerry? Um, probably solution aware. Cool. Yeah, yeah. You have 33% <laughs> chance of getting a rack eye, so that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Actually, um, aware, yes, yeah, solution aware. Solution aware, great. I think uh, product aware. Product aware, for which product specifically? Uh, videography. Yep. yep. So they, know, they already know that they want to get videos done. Well, they know they want content and then want to upload. But are, are videos a solution to their content? Yeah. <laughs> so I guess it's, it's a mix between solution and product, 100%. That is what I'll give you one. So this is not like a melting pot. There's no soups here. You cannot mix things together. There's no pick and mix. I would have two campaigns. Right. Perfect. So, which one are you going to focus most of your energy and attention towards? Um, product aware. Product aware. Sweet. I think I'm a problem aware. Problem aware. Yeah. I would agree with you. Solution. Solution aware. Product aware. Product aware. They know they need. They know they which, need. Which which business are you doing? Are you focusing this towards? It's the rank job. Yeah. So they know they need it um, because they don't want to look shit on the internet and the iPhone's not cutting it anymore and all that. You know, the competition's getting branding photos. I think there's also a culture around this, a little bit trendy. Is that, you know, brand photographers everywhere, and it's becoming a real fun thing to do and to show on Instagram that you, oh, my business is getting a brand shoot done. It's so cool. So I think that... You should just sell brand shoot shoots. I take a photo of you looking like you get a branding shoot. Done. <laughs> 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 uh, product wear. Product wear? Sweet. I'm not sure there's any solution in product. Like if you were to focus like the attention of it on one, because you would have people that would fit in both, mm. but like for this next session at least, which one would you focus on? Probably product. Product, sweet. Steph? Uh, solution aware. Solution aware. Problem aware. Problem aware. I'm not sure, because I think you really have to have the problem nailed down for the core client. So people join mine because they say they want community and connection, but do they really join because they want to grow their business? It's your business, you tell me. Yeah, but that's why, I, like in the survey, it was equal, equal amount joining for growing business or community. But what, what, why would I want a community? Like, what's the purpose of me having a community? To kind of like bounce ideas off and feel more supportive. Yeah, so you, that kind of answers the question, right? Yeah. So even if I say I mean, that's what my marketing's all about, anyway. Yeah, so. even if I say that that's what I want, it's not really. It's like I can go and like I can go to the pub and get the community. Yeah. You know what I mean? But if it's like, the, what's the purpose of the community? Yeah. If it's to grow a business, then it's like, okay, they're both on the same page. Yeah. One of them just just putting a different kind of bow on the same person. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, which level of awareness would you say they are at then? Um, probably solution. Then. Solution. Yeah. Sweet. Solution aware. Solution aware. Why do you say that? I don't know between solution and product, but I think solution because they know when it does them like it's pretty straightforward beauty. What does it do? <laughs> Why don't they just come to me like make me beautiful? Yeah. Is that the truth they do? Yeah, literally. No. Um, well, yeah, they want to enhance their beauty, like enhance their. Is that what they, is that they, they literally come to adjust for that to enhance their beauty? Or are they coming because they want a specific product to enhance their beauty? Yeah, I think that's that. Yeah. Product? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so can, you, can you guys see the kind of difference between those two? Where it's like, if it's like, cool, I just want to be beautiful, it's like, great. But I haven't decided that coming to you and using your services yet are going to be what makes me beautiful. Yeah, true. Sure. Yeah. So it's like again, this is going and applying this to a specific type of campaign. Keeping that in mind, right? Our positioning and what we're actually going to be doing, because our business as a whole does many different things. However, we need to look through one lens only when we're creating a marketing campaign, because otherwise it will suck. 
because we're just trying to appeal to everyone. We're trying to appeal to the unaware, the problem aware, the solution aware, and the product aware, and the most aware. And then it just gets super jumped. So that's Rain why I say. Spray and spray. Exactly. It's, it's, it's just like, ah, the sea. <laughs> Bye. And then it's like, oh, no, I'm bored. Ah. Marketing doesn't work. Right? So you cannot bore people into buying your product. You can only interest them in buying it. That's the only thing that you can do, right? Is, is pique their interest. So you can't be boring, but you have to pique their interest. And that's why, as I said, like if you see something and you see an ad and it's super vanilla, that is trying to bore someone into buying a product. It's just super generic. It's like, yeah, cool. Like come to the gym and like we will do fitness things and we'll work out and uh, good things will happen and you'll feel happier. Uh, God, I actually know what that means. Like, what's going to happen? Like, uh, it doesn't interest me at all. I'm super bored right now. Because people say that oh, the attention span has diminished on people, right? Which is somewhat true. However, if a new Avengers trailer comes out or movie comes out, Ken Lee has a sick day, leaves, goes home, and he's like, I've been watching it all night, right? He will go and do it. If it piques his attention, if it interests him enough, he'll go and do it. He'll go and sit through four hours back to back of Infinity Wars, then he'll go watch it again. Next Wednesday, guys. Next Wednesday, the TV series Loki comes out. Like, it's gonna be fucking epic. <laughs> 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 right, but that's because it's like it's interest. It has interest to someone. What doing it? You can't bore someone into doing it. Now we're going to go into market sophistication. Right, the next level D. So once we've got that listed, then we go to the next level. But market sophistication is much more around your actual market as a whole, whereas market awareness is going to be very specific to a campaign. Does that make sense for everyone? That little distinction there? So we're stepping out of the campaign perspective and looking at the market as a whole. Cool. So this is the very core crux, very basic, but I'm going to go into a bit more detail and give you guys some different things, some questions to identify, and I want you to identify like what to actually do. So there's five levels of market awareness, there's five levels of market sophistication. All right? Eugene really loves number five for some reason. So we have the very first, so oh, hello, market, this is me. Number two, what actually is it, the product or service that you have? Number three, how does it actually work? Number four, fierce competition. Number five, rainbows and, uh, and, and clouds, new experiences. <coughs> That's essentially the five levels of market sophistication. Pretty simple. I could literally probably put a full stop on it and that would, that, would, that would address what they are. However, there's many different things that we need to assess depending on which level our market is actually at as a whole. What is new experience? What does new experiences mean? Well, you just have to wait to find out, won't you? <laughs> Level one is where you're first, right? This is where it's just basically you need to be simple, be direct, you don't have to be fancy. You're the first person to offer that product or service in the marketplace. Can anyone think of any new level one kind of market sophistication level businesses or products that have come out in the last couple of years? Stuff like that. Some, but they're not really first now. Like that was probably like 2013. That would be first. Kajabi, not quite. Not quite. It was the girl that did the winged eyeliner. Thing. Iris. Iris yeah. from the Click. Yeah. I know it sounds really stupid, but she came up with this thing. She's from Perth. She's like a. She liked it really well, and mm -hmm. she got with, like went all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. It was the first of that type. It was the first, first of its kind. Like absolutely first. The only reason I would say no for like Kajabi is because like ClickFunnels does that. Members Pro, there's many different ones that would do a similar thing. Or like the the chick that did the um the makeup bridges when they first came yes. out. There was one chick who developed the first little did the same girl? Yeah, same Oh, girl. that's one you know, same thing, right? <laughs> she has many firsts. So there's many different things that you can kind of think of. But then it's like you don't need to be fancy. It's like, hey, I have a fridge for your makeup. Bang, done. Yeah. Pretty simple. <laughs> now, you're, yeah, I was gonna say you're looking very confused. <laughs> So when you're like apparently girls, they keep their makeup in the fridge so it doesn't go off, go bad, etc. And there's a little one you can put on your counter in your bathroom, so you have your makeup in there, so you don't have to go to the normal fridge to get your. I'm unaware. 
That's what I that's what I just said. You said you don't have to go to your kitchen. Yeah, but you also don't have to go to your kitchen to go like. like different In the kitchen fridge. Sorry, sorry, to digress. So now, because there's more of them, you have to be able to. You know, you can't be as direct. Us guys, we miss the we. We missed the point, yeah. You can sell it. I'm not even going to dignify that with that answer. So, but you can see, there's when those products come out, so you don't have to be fancy. It's like, cool, bridge for your makeup. Pretty simple. Like, tips for your eyelashes, whatever the thing wants, right? No need to be fancy around it. Because if people know that they want it, they know that they want it. All you need to do is name the need or the claim, that's pretty much it. It's like, cool. Makeup going off, great. Here's, this solves the problem. Simple. Next is when you're set, right? So this is where you need to kind of make and improve upon the claim that's already been done. Most of you guys, again, are probably not gonna be at this level. I'd probably say you're at the next level and potentially beyond that for some of you guys. But that's just like in enlarging it, right? So if you have a claim, which is like, cool, I keep your makeup at the right temperature, then they can enlarge it, right? Which is then you have like, oh, cool, but now I make one that looks pretty, right? It looks much better than the other one. It looks like this, it's like that. It's still doing the same thing, but we're just enlarging upon what our actual claim was. We're just making that bigger. That's better, right? Fitness, fit, fitness, fitness, and weight loss, right? If you go back and look at that, <coughs> but if you were the very first person to, can, can you move like just like this much to your right, please? And your computer screen, just a little bit. And it's just, just in the way of the clicker line, so it's just it's, it's jam it up, thank you. All right, so first, if you imagine being in fitness, it's like, cool, we help you lose weight. If you're the first person to ever do that, everyone's like, oh, cool. Like, great, I'm happy with that. Then if you go on to the second one, it's like we enlarge and make it better. We help you lose weight in six weeks or less. Still the same claim, but we enlarged it, we made it better. Or we help you lose 20 kilos, it's not just lose weight, we help you lose a specific amount, making that claim even bigger. Number three, they've heard it all before. They're really hoping to find something new, something they haven't heard of. This is where they're looking for something new, a new mechanism to make them believe again. What would an example of this be? Facebook ads. Ah, sorry. Um, they've been promised that Facebook ads works in the past, but then people don't give them what they want. So they think everyone's so what's shit. New about that? Like how, how would that be? How would you create something that's new? Uh, create like a mechanism? To say, hey, this out. Oh, well, there it is. Like, yeah. Like yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Cool. So, like, what would be a mechanism in the world of Facebook ads? The NLC method, or is that? Yeah. You can see my method, yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go like. Two. Um, like Messenger, for example, instead of just normal ads on Facebook, and just like use a different technique of doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. Sorry. What about well, what's fitness problem? Fitness and I would say ads and advertising is past this level of sophistication, right? It's past it. So, what would be an example of this? Because now we have the benefit of hindsight looking back in the world of fitness. What would have been the mechanism that made people believe again? Hydroxycut hardcore. <laughs> yeah. Hydroxycut hardcore max. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Max, now now with new Ginkgo Babesha, right? All of those things, adding on. What, what would be an example? That's in the world of nutrition or fitness. What about our training? F45. F45, CrossFit. Yeah, right? F45. FSA is the new. Yeah. yeah. But so I, I would assume, I don't know what FSA is, but I would assume that it's probably only going to have a very minimal effect in comparison to a lot of what CrossFit did. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because it's past this level of sophistication. They're like a level behind. So what are we doing? Just wait and see. Just wait and find out. <laughs> Just wait and find out. 
right? But that's all, all of these companies, when they did it, you can see what made them successful, like P90X, like Beachbody. They all created all these new different mechanisms, which is like, hey, exercise, <laughs> basically, right? But they just had to attach the sexy name to it. The new one is that strong, the row former, Pilates row former cardio things, anyone? Row former? Follow Michael Ramsey? Michael Ramsey, no idea. No, but yes, there is. I mean, we've got a couple of Pilates uh, people in the house, so they'll probably tell us that, the answer to that as well. But yes, it is a new version of, yeah. so but you can- rowing and Pilates on the thing combined. Yeah, but you'll see in a sec why, if like, if yeah, <laughs> you do the things on the thing at the same <laughs> time and it's cardio. Yeah. And you get fit. Yeah. <laughs> With like a life cycle of this sort Sorry. of stuff and sophistication. Oh yeah. Sorry. Hello. We'd like the life cycle of the sophistication within the market. So if you go back to like, I'll use supplements because I grew up in that world. So you, you started off with like hydroxy cut and then it went to like hydroxy cut hardcore and then it went to hydroxy cut like 2.0, 10 times, whatever. And then the industry's changed so much where um, I feel like the sophistication of the market is, oh, no, no, like we don't accept this bullshit anymore. Like there's basic scientific evidence stuff and it's almost scaled back the whole industry. So would many industries reach a point where everything tries to um, uh, one up each other until eventually people just go, no, that's that's no longer correct. Yeah. 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 Yes. Short answer, yes. Cigarettes is the best and easy example of doing that when they used to promote them properly. Yeah. So Defined properly event. of cigarettes? Well, now everyone's like, you have cancer and it's bad. Oh. And like that. So before they kind of had all the realizations when your doctor would prescribe you cigarettes. Yeah. At the original days of advertising and marketing, they did exactly that. They kept one up in themselves. And the only way that they did that is by transitioning to level five, which we'll touch on in a sec. But you can probably think of, again, most of us probably not old enough to remember that specific period of time when they started bringing out, like they brought out characters for personification reasons and whatnot, which is part of level five, which will kind of make sense in a second when we get there. Mm -hmm. But many different ones have to do that. And they almost, <clears throat> they almost start again, whereas like then they can kind of go back through some of the levels of sophistication okay. almost. But it just depends on, especially when it's something that's like scientifically backed in some way, shape or form, like cigarettes would be, like supplements would be, you can only get so far. Yeah. You kind of see the reason why so why they've gone back to that point. Okay, all right. I'll be quiet and I'll wait for that second moment. Sorry, like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> bad dog, bad dog. Get this guy. Good catch. <laughs> right, so does that, does that make sense for everyone so far? Does anyone think that their business is at this level? I have a business at this level. Yeah? Which business? Organic berries. They're soap nuts. So they... Wash your cat. This is why. Soap nuts. Yeah, great. So this is why I love it. Uh, it's Sorry. Like laundry, so Good try. Yeah, organic berry, the Australian soap berry. Uh, There's a bit of a plug there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's just landing pages at the moment. Um, which is the same thing. Um, yeah, soap nuts. So they're pretty much, it's laundry detergent, but they grow on trees in Australia six months of the year, put four or five of them in a Hessian bag and they wash your clothes. And then once you finish them, you just throw them in the gut. So I feel it's the same as this because it's not detergent. It's like the eco way to use detergent. So you're not putting chemicals back into the ocean. You're not you're buying plastics. Is that one of the main selling points? Yeah, it's all that. It's an eco play. Right. So this, I would say, is also going to be a level five. Okay, cool. I'll show you why in just a second. But yeah, good. I like that. Nuts. Right, see, so I buy a tree and I get free washing for the rest of my life. <laughs> level four is a new stage of elaboration. This is where you take the mechanism to the next level, make it quicker, easier, surer, solve more problems, overcome limitations, or promise extra benefits. This is probably where I would say 90% of businesses in this room are kind of sitting at is this stage and the next one, where it's like people, are, they already have mechanisms out there. Right, they're already doing these things. Like Brenda just said, like, was it FSA? FSA is the new F45 franchise. Yeah, so FSA, right? So much better than F45, right? We train with eight minute segments six times, right? 48 minutes, even better. Three more minutes of power. 
<laughs> so, right? They're just all they're doing is taking the mechanism to the next level. It's going. I'm assuming it's going to tick one of these boxes, right? That's what they're kind of hoping that it's going to going to be able to do. However, a lot of people have, have already seen versions of that. That's why immediately I'm like, mm, I wonder if their marketing team have gone through the level of market sophistication. Maybe, maybe not. Because I think there'll be an opportunity in there by taking it actually to the next stage to identify that. But um, do you know any, like, just off the top of your head, like, what would be a reason for buying that and having that as a franchise rather than F45? Yeah, so it's actually owned by F45, but it's their way of getting into the Pilates yoga and stretch market. Um, so it's to go up against KX Pilates and those franchise models. So they're taking their business model, but then trying to put it into a new market so they can scale out that way and sell more franchises. Cool. Does anyone think their business is at this level? Yep. Well, I'm gonna go like that. Why? Because I feel like yeah, I feel our market is either level four or five, and I feel that's because everybody is just so custom to everything now. Like even like people know that you already have like those unique mechanism in place but it's not enough like for example you come up with like m2 course then you m3 so you keep upgrading it to the next level and i feel marketing industry is in that level you have to just keep coming with the next thing even if you have the unique mechanism in place do you have a unique mechanism in place? i do cpr method cpr method yeah cool so how are you gonna how would you enhance that <laughs> yeah cpr 2.0 <laughs> something to think about CPR yeah method. So you've got to be able to, this is what you've got to do, is literally tick one of these boxes, right? Quicker, easier, surer, solve more problems, overcome limitations, promise century benefits. You go CPR defect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that business coaching is pretty, like people know about it, people like, a six month mastermind is not something that is uncommon or unheard of. Um, and so the only thing that we can do differently to help, I guess, or success, I guess, is what's really being sold um, is to do it quicker, easier, overcome more limitations faster, promise extra stuff that no one else is offering. Personally, that's why I think I would be at this level. Mm -hmm. So what, do you, what, what would be the mechanism that all that would fall under? Well, the, me the mechanism is the six month mastermind, right? <laughs> well, I mean, we have our PMP method, which is the, or the model, um, which we use to help clients get results, which is kind of our like surefire way to get clients results. Mm -hmm. So that would be the mechanism. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So then how, like, so how would you then go about, do you think, making it quicker, easier, shorter, all those things? I guess that in terms of market sophistication, what I was more using this as a, a point of is that it's compared to other business coaches, we've been able to make it quicker, easier, solve more problems, overcome limitations. But in terms of taking my own and making it better and faster, I haven't considered it yet. Yeah. yeah. Because you know what I mean? It's like if you're, if you're viewing, like if your business is here and we're all viewing us in the outside of looking at it, it's like how do I know that you have a mechanism in place that's going to help me get that faster if I'm an external person? Yeah. That's like, that's, that's the lens that you want to look, look through it to because it's like, of course, once people are in, we know that we do all these things. Yes. But then it's like, great. So it's like our positioning to the marketplace. How do we then change that? Mm. And it's like, I'll, I'll give you an example once we get to number five as well. I just wanted to think of and going, cool, well, if I'm in here in, and this is my business and I'm looking at it outside, it's like, how do I know that this is going to help? me get this water into my mouth better, faster, more sure, uh, different to this or this. Yeah. And how do I do that? And that's what we want to kind of portray, and that's what our positioning of our business needs to be kind of based somewhere around. Mm, okay, yeah. yeah. So we're using, like, obviously referrals, testimonials, social proof a lot for that, but I think we could be doing it better in our actual marketing yeah. aside so from that. You can encapsulate, like, almost like your business overarching promise and what it actually does in delivers yep. based around, like, what we view it upon and how it stands out differentiates. Mm. That's when things will completely shift. And it's like, oh, cool. It's like, I'm, I'm not in a pool. I'm not in a red ocean. It's like, I'm over here sailing in the blue ocean by myself. No one else is around me. Cool. Love it. Yeah. Like making your unique mechanism like quicker, easier, or whatnot, doesn't it make it like, doesn't it raise more a skepticism in the market that, oh, we already heard this before, like you telling us you can do it quicker. I'm a skeptic. I mean, it, it, it's 
I feel it's raising a skepticism. So it's new experience. If you're, uh, wait for Turkey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, I also think that because it's like the market is just set, so saturated, like digital marketing, so everyone is like, okay, another digital marketing agency. But it's more like the, I think the mechanism is just like the niching down so much that like people know exactly, okay, we go to you for a lead generation, we go to you for e-com or whatever. Um, so that's so how they see it um, outside clearer and uh, like to make it like a differentiation point then like to have that relationship I think a little bit more of like not just being a number but actually having the relationship with the client. Yeah so again the only <coughs> problem with that is that that happens once they come and, and talk to you. Yeah. So if I'm like cool again this is Eva. Ecom. Yeah it's like cool this is also Eva. Mm. And this is a mm. What's the testimonials then. Someone, you, Cause you do need to have an identifier mechanism. Cool. Right. Every, all of these could be e-com, right? But this is the only one that operates under the cylindrical vessel principle. Okay. And right? it works. Yeah. <laughs> right. This is the only one that, that does that. Yes. All of us do e -com. But this is the only one that does that. Try and I challenge you. Try and find another one that does, and they don't because it's your own unique mechanism. So that that's what it means. Like that's how you have to kind of differentiate because it's like you can't differentiate by things that happen or occur once someone starts working with you because your market can't say that. So you need to be able to step inside. So same if you're trying to amplify or improve upon it, you need to identify. It's very hard. Thank you. Thank you. So like, I could I could differentiate you from the marketplace, like in a lineup. If people were lined up, like in those um, old shows where you've got all the villains right lined up, all the perpetrators, I could clearly differentiate. That's what we're looking for and trying to achieve with that. Right? Does that make sense? But it doesn't mean like going super super niche. Does it mean going super niche, or is it based no. on like? A... It's based on. <laughs> We need to have, if someone's heard it all before, it's like, cool, I've heard all the promises. Like Alice says, like, I've heard all the promises from e-commerce e agencies. They can get me this role, as they can do this, they can do that. Like, so what? I've heard it all before. Then the only way that you can stand out is by having a new mechanism in there to make them believe again. That's why I says, like, if you can go through and you can be like, oh, cool. Like, uh, ideally, you want your prospect, your prospective customers to be like, oh, that's why it has worked. That's the, like the aha moment you want them to have because then that means that there's a new mechanism which makes them believe in it again, right? Why am I going to go like, oh, I've gone to the gym so many different times. It's been great, but F45 is different. It's functional in 45 minutes. I come up there for an hour and a half. They have all the, me do all these things, blah, 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 blah. It's new. Ah, oh, amazing. So now I believe that I can achieve my goal again. So if someone's going like, cool, but like, What's what's the difference? Like what's the difference between you and Joe Blow down the street? That's where the mechanism comes in. You gotta make them believe in it again. And then you've got to go to the next level, which is enhancing that. It's like a new stage of elaboration, but it's taking it to the next level. And it's like the per the best example of these are all of the like supplements is one, um, the shampoo and beauty industry is one that have like do it all the time. After they had the initial version of shampoo, then they made a new version, Pro V. Right, and then it's like cool, Pro V Plus. Right, your hair just isn't shiny enough. It could be shiny or not shiny, depending on what you like. If you're a shiny person, I don't know what people like. Right, but it's extra, I'm promising extra things. So it's like I've, I've taken it to the next level, because if I know that I want something specifically, right, even like the um, the beef industry, if you go there and then there's beef that you can order, that's like a whole range of different prices and products, and then they make a differentiator. Right, which is a new stage of elaboration, which is literally where that market is currently. Like uh, Kerry, Matthew, I and uh, my partner and some other friends went to dinner on uh, over Christmas, and we went to go have dinner. We went to no, and we're sitting there and we're having dinner, and we'll just we had a few drinks. They're like, all right, cool. What like what do you want? And I was like, where like everyone else is ordering all these things. I don't like seafood. So that Kim, you don't like seafood, you choose the meat. I'm like, cool, can do that, no problem. And I was like, great. I want such and such meat, and the guy's like, oh, well, do you want like 
the Japanese version, which is like Marvel score of X, Y, and Z, or do you want like the Australian version, which is Marvel score of that? I'm like, well, what's the difference? Like, he's like, well, obviously uh, the Japanese one being that it's that Marvel, blah, 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 and it's this type of Kobe beef, obviously that one's going to be tastier. And I'm like, obviously, right? Obviously, oh, we just <laughs> promise extra benefits, right? This is going to be the most tasty one. I was like, cool. Well, of course we're going to have that. How much do we need? Uh, 20 grams per person. Cool. Give us whatever it is, 120 grams. Not a problem. Brings it out, cooks it all out. We all eat it. It's delicious. It's amazing. Then we go, then we get the bill. And then they're like, the carrier was over there at the counter. He's like, Kim, you can never order dinner again. And I was like, why? And it was like, it was something in the vicinity of like $150 per like 50 grams of beef or something ridiculous like that. I didn't look at the price, ask him the price. I was just like, I wanted the extra benefit. I was going to taste it. I was like, I'm in charge of ordering the meat. So I want everyone to have the best meat experience possible. May have been more like three quarters of our dinner cost was just that 150 grams of, uh, of steak that we had, right? My bad. However, why did I buy it? Because he promised me the extra benefit, right? He's like, it's going to be so much better. You could have that other meat, but if you want the tastiest, if you want the absolute best, I'm like, oh, cool. This is Kobe, plus it's got marble score of this, this, this. Absolutely. Like, I have to order that one. I got the extra benefits because it was a sophisticated place. It's like, otherwise, it could just say steak on the menu. But if I go in there and just say, hey, I want steak, that's not very sophisticated. Like, what type of steak is it? Like, how long has it been aged for? Has it been dry aged? All these different sorts of stuff. Right? Vegetarians in the room not very happy with you. But this is this is the, a perfect example of that. Because I promised extra benefits, I was like, I'm, I'm willing to take that because it differentiated from everything else that was on the menu. What was it extra benefits? <laughs> it, was, it was probably the tastiest beef. I, and look, if I had also known the price, I probably would have savored it a little bit more. Like, I was just like, oh, this is and great. And you also the last piece as well, didn't you? Yeah, I was like, there's one piece left, and I was like, I'll be the kind, nice person. And I'm like, okay, don't worry, man. I saw yours and I was like, I really wanted it because they're tasty. But I was like, you haven't made all yours. And I was like, I just gave him 60 bucks worth of steak and that, was like, that, one, <laughs> that one little buy, I would have like, you know, saved it and just uh, enjoyed, the, enjoyed the flavors. But because of this, that's, that's the reason why I took it, because they promised the extra benefit of it. Right? Same as if you go and get, like, if you look at cars and things like that as well, they always have series, right? You have the base, then you have the, the extra, the extra level, then you have like the premium. Right? Because they want to promise extra benefits. Like, otherwise, like this is a car. It's you from A to B. Every single car does that. But when you layer in all of those extra different points, all the extra differentiation, then it's like, hmm, every single, every single thing that they add on is going to do one of these things. Overcome the potential. You don't know how to parallel park. Bang, perfect car for Christy. She can buy that car. Parallel park, not a problem. Right? Get you there quicker, easier, whatever it might be. She even had need a parallel park for her yesterday when she got here just to make sure she can get in. So one of the things that, as part of Chrissy's, <laughs> as part of Chrissy's job, we gave her Anita to drive around with her to parallel park quicker, easier, sure, more likely to overcome problems. Not going to hit curves, guaranteed. Right. All right. Now we get to level five. This is where a lot of you are probably playing. This is where I was chatting with Tim earlier. This is one that he's hitting into, like where they just don't believe you anymore. Right? They're just like, mm, nah. Don't think that's true. Mm, twelve week, twelve week, uh, twelve week challenge. Done that. Done that. Played that. Experienced that. This is where things have to switch around, right? This is where it switches from mechanism to identification with the prospect themselves. You're just looking, you're, like you're like just about to ask a question. Hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, no, I'm just quite concentrating, and I'm just in my mind trying to like, I don't know, visualize this from words to. My life, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's how visualization normally happens. Yeah, that was my thinking yeah. face. Sorry, that was thanks, Steph. That was that was that was my thinking face. Yeah, yeah, cool. I get that. I get that. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it was like this. It was like. And those words, they were my speaking words. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and the, the speaking words came in, and I got a picture in my mind. I understand. Yeah. So this is where you need to switch to identification with the prospect themselves. I.e., the reason why I'm switching to soap nuts is because I don't want to put bad things onto my washing machine that goes onto my clothes that I wear every day. I don't want that. Otherwise, I would buy the $4 detergent at the shops. <coughs> so I identify as someone who doesn't want to have that experience, as someone who's clean and, and cares about the environment and I can throw the things out into the garden and it breaks down into fertilizer and grows more trees, circle of life, right? That's what I believe in. That's my identification, right? That's exactly the same as what you were mentioning about the supplements. Because now everyone's like, nah, all of that stuff doesn't work. I don't believe you. All of that unbacked scientific stuff. It's like, cool. 
what are we going to do? We're going to go back to the fundamentals that are going to show you just the building blocks that you need to have in place to actually ensure that you get a good outcome by identifying with them because that's what people want. It's like when it's all been hyped up and oversold and everything, what works is like going back to basics. Yeah. Building up from the building blocks of, of what makes human beings as a whole work. And essentially just can't like with that, it just came back to trust more than anything. Mm. Yeah. And if you're seen as integrous, so like your why, and then like even if it's evidence based, they want to feel smarter. And it's like, oh, this is like a reputable basic for quality. Yeah, companies. exactly. Right. It's look at Apple getting honing on the why, like Simon said, it would say, Apple sell computers. So does IBM, so do many, so does Dell, so does many different people. Why does like probably, I well, know everyone's got them out, everyone bar one that I can see, apart from you, man, what's going on? <laughs> you, didn't get, you didn't buy into the why, you're like, computer's a computer, right? Why do you guys have Macs? They're beautiful. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. And if they're beautiful, what does that mean about you? Pardon? If they're beautiful and you have one, what does that mean about you? Obviously. Um, <laughs> Obviously what? Well. I, I appreciate you guys. Yeah. I don't know, they're good. I, don't know. <laughs> I just don't want to be an Android person, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I just don't want to be one of them. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I can't put it into words, but like, you look at Apple, it's just such a beautiful brand. It's so clean, the interface, everything about it's nice. Like, have you ever picked up a Samsung? I bought a Sam. <laughs> About five years ago, I bought a Samsung S5 because it was supposed to be the smart person's thing. And as soon as I open it and I turn it on, the smart person's. Um, I thought I was, but then I turned it on and the interface of Android is so shit. And it was the worst two years ever. So then I went straight back to Apple. Anyway. I was on a plan. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Because, again, you identified that in any of the transactions, because it was a smart person's phone, yeah. you bought the smart person's phone. You identified with it and you purchased. Albeit you didn't stay with them. No. You made the transaction. I wasn't a smart person, no. Yeah. Exactly. But you were like, that's what you aspired for. That's what you were, your identification level was at. Yeah. And then you're like, I need to go back to the beautiful, the clean, the sleek, the simple app. Yeah. Because that's what I also identify as that you want to be, I want to aspire to be like. So at this level, where I say they don't believe you anymore, the only way to change what they're doing is to identify, like to make them identify with it, or either the, the product, or they need to identify with your beliefs. Your yeah. Company. Like, because identifying, like, we all know we need a computer, right? Tick for Apple. However, we still have a myriad of different choices that we can choose. Mm -hmm. But the reason why we want to choose it is because we're brought into the why. Right, most people know or I've heard of probably can't quote, but I've heard of the the whole the, um, Apple's like cry to arms that they created when they wanted. It was for, who was Apple for? Hmm? Who was who Apple? Apple for? Like, Creatives. You know, initially, creative. Yeah, where for where for where for the different people? Where for the crazy one? Where for this? Where for that? Like they had their their whole slogan and catch cry that they had was to make people identify with becoming and like Simon said next video with does a perfect example. It's like hmm. just what happens to be. Yeah. But identify with the why. So if you're at this level where they just don't believe anymore, the only way is to either get them to buy in and identify it by if I wanted to be what that product will make me, i.e. like socially conscious and I'm a, a environmental conscious by using soap nuts. Mm -hmm. Or it's like the why of your business as a whole. It's like cool. Apple is for people that are bigger than their problems. They're there for different people. I want to buy in and be like that. That's why people convert across and and after they've used things in the past. And use it because they apply into the why of the business. Yeah. So, who here, like, uh, I would say that a couple of you guys would be in the same, but who here feels like they share their why effectively to their prospective clients so that they could jump on board with that as a mission and really want to go after? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, if I pull up search box websites, it will articulate your why. What's the, what's the why? <laughs> yeah, yeah, jump, jump, jump. yeah. Okay, we'll go. That is a classic example of being thrown under the bus. But um, I would say our why is certainly the why I tell people. I'm not sure if it's on our website, but um, the ticket to freedom, business owner life, right? It's why we got into business in the first place. Yep. So what does that actually mean? Like, why, if I'm on board with that, like, to the, what does freedom mean? It's a good question. And I guess freedom is the, like, living life on your own terms. Thank you. 
for throwing me on the bus. Um, yeah, living life on your own terms and having options up your sleeve to be able to do what you want when you want. I would say that's probably like part, part of Cool. Uh, I, well, yeah. Interested to know what you think, though. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when I, I wrote the website why, so it was like why we do what we do is to help businesses um, get leads on while they sleep sort of thing. Not articulating it very well. But, yeah, consistently grow their business. That's why we wanted to help them and be ethical and honest about doing so. Um, so it means like the, the reason why I say part of the way there, I'm not picking on you because you guys have put that put their hand up. So kudos for actually saying that you believe you've got it there. Yeah. Uh, which you've got part of it there. But it's like you it needs to be something that like when you think about the why and you kind of like Apple was like it's almost like a, a rallying cry of what they're putting out there and saying that people want to jump behind and really believe in that. And it's like yours is probably part, like 50, 40, 50 percent of the way to the point where it would articulate that where someone's like, that's why I'm gonna work with these guys. Mm. Because they just get it. Yeah, I was definitely saying we need to improve on that a lot just from that. So, yeah. yeah. So, it's like, it's like, as they say, it's on the way. But that's where it's like, if you can get them to do that. So, when they read that, they're like, cool. Then it becomes like, I don't even care what the price is. Yeah. I just want to work. And, and again, like, I've been using him as an example a lot because it's around marketing. And, like, he learns a lot from you. He's from Russell Brunson. But if you look at, like, the whole the whole movement of funnel hackers and whatnot, it's because that's what they're actually, they're actually selling is the why. Like their manifesto and everything, and then when you read it, you're like, yes, yes, yes. Exactly. Like we never actually <laughs> did. Um, probably didn't do a whole heap with it, and I'll see if I can find what the one that we did. I've got that's it. Like, I've got yours. That's the certified board one. <laughs> yeah. 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 Cool. It's great. It's great. Is Wait. that why you signed up? <laughs> um, like we were right. I saw them. I saw Lady Boss's one, and she did hers, and a few others, and I was like, ah, I can see why people rally behind them and why they're doing so well. Because then it doesn't like price is not really a factor. It's like I just want to be mm. and have that. I want to be a part of that experience. And that's what like ideally if you're at this level, is what you need to be able to, to do to listen to like, and get behind. And like I was I'm just chatting with him earlier and I was like, cool, this is what I think your marketing needs to be like. Because it's like you've had mm. so many people, there's like 12 week challenges, there's all these different sort of stuff, and it's like cool, the only way to overcome that now is to basically ascend from that and create identification. <laughs> With the prospect themselves or the businesses, why? Like that's the only two items that you have to stand out and differentiate. You can still have some success. You can still get leads. You can still grow your business, no problem. Because like, if you wanted to have that point where it's like a great uptick, you're like, ah, cool, like I've got the solution now. This is what needs to happen for. Does that make sense, for everyone? Yeah. yeah. How does like at that point, like a personal brand, tie into that? Um, because. Does it, yeah, that's I guess what I'm asking. So is that what, why they do a personal brand? You don't have to, but it's like there's, if you have a mission, there's a leader of the mission. Mm. Someone has to be the leader of the mission. Mm. Like if you think about space exploration, it's like in America, it's like this NASA, right? Yeah. But who was the first person on the moon? Who was the person to rally behind the earth? <laughs> no one knows who was the first person on the moon. I forgot. I'm sure, yeah, sure, yeah, right? So if that was the first person that was on the moon, that's the person that everyone rallied behind. Yeah. Right? So then it's like you need to have... Oh, I have a Buzz Aldrin was pretty cool too. Yeah, exactly. But Because they're, like, they're the people to rally behind. Right? You need to have leaders of missions. Right? It's like if you listen to... Um, I'll, come, I'll come to your question in just a sec. If you listen to uh, Machine Ownership, right? Great book by Jocko Lewis. And you listen to that, it's like, cool. There is a commander of a team, of a SEAL team. That's the person you just do, that's the person you follow in, and you get in line behind. And so like if you didn't have that, and it's just like, oh, cool, all of us, let's go together, let's go catch some of Bin Laden. But you'll get there, but it would fall to pieces. But it's like, mm -hmm. you have a person to rally behind and get there and do it, right? Then then that's where things will start to happen. Quicker. Yeah. Do you have any questions to for us to prompt uh, this, like for ourselves, for our mission, for our why, these types of things? <laughs> like, <laughs> other than that, yeah. I would say the best, the best reason, reasoning behind creating a way and whatnot. I would just say, like, I'm, I would do a four dollar bit. It's Simon's next video, yeah. where he kind of breaks it down. He doesn't really prompt you and be like, ask yourself this question. But he, I think he does a very good job of like unpacking the layers of it, where he goes like outside of 
outside layer and then all the way into the region to the reason why. Yeah. I think there is a not to get into the why, but I think there are some questions in breakthrough advertising, which I'll have a look at. I'll have a look at it tonight or something like that and see if I can find where some of Eugene Schwartz's um, questions he has around that yeah. and how he kind of gets out of it. But if you can if you can do it, you can tap into it. Like it's, that's, that's where it's like you will see game changing stuff and it's like your like clients will just be like, yeah, cool, I just want to be a part of that. Cool. How and maybe that video answers my question, but also like how deep do you go and on what levels? So for me, like in my my parent coaching business, I have a lot of like a lot of my why is from a lot of my own family stuff. But I'm like, I'm not going into a counseling session with these people. I'm going to spill my heart. The second thing is a lot of like the secondary to that. A lot of it comes from having worked in child protection and being in like child protection investigations and knowing the impact of not doing this work and knowing the impact of continuing to repeat cycles of parenting yeah. that don't serve. That's why that's why you've got the two. But then I don't want to turn people off because they're like, oh, I'm not that bad. Like we've never been involved in child protection. It's like, yeah, I get that. But also not understanding the impact that you have as a parent throughout those early formative years, you may not get as bad as getting to the level of child protection, but you, you also are not doing a great job. Yeah, so like the whole point is like, when you look at, for example, like Apple's wife statement, it's not like, hey, you're uncreative, you're unsexy, you suck, <laughs> come and buy Apple. Yeah, okay. It's like, it's painting the picture of the reason why. So you said the reason why I do what I do is because I've been involved in child protection. I've seen the flip side of the coin and I know that you guys have never do this, but I've seen what happens to kids, to parents, like it breaks my heart every single day what I see yeah. and the relationships break down. I don't want that for anyone. That's why I started my business is so I can help parents get on top of that and get as far away from that as possible. Yeah. That's my, that's the reason why I do what I do. You know what I mean? So you're not, you're not saying like, you will, this will happen if you don't yeah, work with okay. me type thing. Yeah. So if you can flip that around or if you're happy with sharing your story, that's where you can share it's more about they identify as the old version of you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that, that's the two different like angles that you can go for. It's like the overarching why. Like there was the guys that, um, there's a company called Operation Underground Railroad. I heard them speak mm -hmm. at an event and when I listened to them, like I was literally, but the, I was in tears crying and then one of the guys who was in the film was in the road in front of me and then got up on stage and all this stuff and I was like, this is intense. I was like, I have to, like these guys, all these guys are doing amazing. I have to do something about that. So I came back, I put on an event here, sold tickets, screened the movie, raised enough money to save like a couple of kids and bring them out of like sex trafficking and all that sort of stuff. Only because when they, when I heard why they were doing what they did, I was like, mm -hmm. I'm on board. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're not, they didn't say, Kim, you're going to sex traffic kids. And I was like, no, 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 <laughs> far away from that as possible, right? But because I heard the story of why they wanted to do all the stuff that they were doing, I was like, I want to be a part of that and support that wherever possible. Yeah. So I think if you share that, they're going to be like, cool, that, we're not bad parents. However, they probably know I've seen or experienced a kid and seen something like that that would happen. Like, I wouldn't want that to ever happen to those. So, of course, they're going to give the best foundation for my kids as possible. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Hey, Kim. Hey. Regardless of which stage you're at here, I know Oh, hang on. I'll show you. If you have a, like, that strong enough why, could you just bypass level one to four and just go there and use that as your sales kind of tool from the start? Would, but there wouldn't be the need to. Yeah. It's like, I mean, uh, depends. Is mm -hmm. my answer. Test sure. Marketing answer what I want. Right? Just test it, bro. Um, no, but I mean, look, think about like Elon Musk yeah. and what he's doing by taking people to Mars. It's like a big mission that they're looking to get behind and that's kind of like his whole reason why. And if you look at that mission and breakdown, mm -hmm. like you could say that he's gone straight to that level, right? Yeah. However, really, Elon Musk is at level four. Why do you reckon he's at level four? He's doing it uh, quicker, easier. Well, cost effective. He's going to a new stage of elaboration. We've already gone mm. to the moon, right? Mm. What's next? Mars. I'm going to go to Mars. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm going to take you to Pluto, bro. That's next for me. Right? <laughs> no, this Mars close stuff. I'm going to go to the next level. Mm. Right? But then there'll be like, it's like, cool. I believe that we can go and explore and find new life in the universe. That would be like level five. So I'm going, like, I believe that there's more intelligent people than human beings out there. I want to go find them. Who's jumping on my ship? Sure. That's level five. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you could go all the way to there, but most of the time, it's like you, 
it's going to be pretty hard to come up with a new level one business idea, mm. product, infrastructure, etc. Because most things have already been created. Yeah. Bless you. Thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You're gradually getting better at the product. That's great. Sweet. Now we're getting into per roof. How it off the time? Perfect timing. So in this, this is going to be a little bit shorter section because I'm just going to give you proof, like right? show you what to actually take away, implement, apply, etc. All right. So this is going to be like rapid fire writing these down and look to see if you guys actually have an eye implementing these in your market. So a marketing message without proof is nothing more than a string of claims, right? That's pretty much all that it is. Nice and simple. There's not really much else to it. So again, if we are just putting together a string of claims. People are like, yeah, don't believe it, without any proof. So I can, I will make you a million dollars in your business, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, can you though? Right, that's the question that pops up in people's mind. So that's what we need to address, overcome. So that's why we need proof to tie in with our marketing. Proof transforms typical claims into believable facts. Which is what we want people to have. It's like, cool, I, this is a fact of what's going to happen. It's not just that maybe this will happen. It's a guaranteed fact. Every claim should be supported. <coughs> by at least one proof point, if not two to three, right? At least one, most people have zero, so at least one, if not two to three, right? If you can have two to three, then that's gonna be much, 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 much more effective, and it just makes it into even more so a believable fact. So here's a few to get you guys motors running. I literally step aside, you guys to take photos, write those down. I'd recommend writing them down, so that then it sticks in your mind a little bit more. And then go cool as you write them down. Think about like what could you do, what could you tie into specifically, and straight away that would actually help your marketing campaigns. Dramatic demonstration for like agencies, for example, it's just like running through an account of like seeing them almost directly, or like how does so dramatic demonstration? So I did this as an example. So I set up an entire campaign and launched it recorded me doing the whole thing. I was like, cool, this is how I do this in like 20 minutes. Yeah. I think it was like 10 minutes, but. Yeah, I think that's a good Does everyone have at least like three, four, or five of these at least that they could find about their industry and business? Yeah. yeah? Cool. Why aren't you guys using them then? <coughs> Gosh. What is this? So every time now, as I said, like every time when you're tying in a marketing campaign, so we've kind of stepped away from the sophistication of the market and your business as a whole back into the campaign structure now with proof. It's like, how can we tie some of these things in? Right? That's what we want to basically be able to pull is like every time we launch it, if we make one specific claim, back it by these things. So I, I could say, for example, like Facebook ads are going to be the best thing ever to grow your business. But if I go, cool, here's an ac academic study that tested Facebook ads versus YouTube versus Google versus word of mouth versus this. Facebook ads came out on top. They're like, oh, okay, okay. This guy's getting somewhere now. Statistics, 79% of the time it works every time, right? Start putting some of those things in there improving it, showing a chart and graph of a client's business when they came to us and then by applying Facebook ads like the increase, things like that. All of those make it more so that I'm stating a fact now, I'm not just making a claim. Where it's like, cool, this person actually knows what they're talking about. It's not just like a throwaway comment being like, oh, this is good. It's like, cool, scientifically proven, this is the reason why. Or actually giving the reasons why. Some people don't. Like, video is good. Why is video good? Give me all the reasons, right? Like for all these reasons, because then again, it just everything that you back up begins to make logical sense to people. So even though a lot of times people make their decisions emotionally, they will justify them logically. So if we have that backup proof, and it's like, great, there's no problem here in the decision I'm making because it's backed up. It's a fact. It's factual. Does anyone not have any of these 13 points that they could use? No? Good. 
Golden, happy days. Quick question: What is the difference between Whoa. testimonial and social proof? What is the difference between testimonials and social proof? Yeah. Testimonials is more like a specific client calling out, being like, "Hey, I work with such and such. They did these amazing things." Mm -hmm. Social proof could be as much as like. You, even though it's got news items there, that could be you being featured as an expert. Could be you being featured on a podcast where it's like, oh, more than just this person and their clients believe in them. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions on any of these? No. Who's got at least five that they could use? By show of hands. Six. Eight. Ten. Thirteen. Yeah, I'm back in at 13. <laughs> awesome, sweet. So my challenge for you guys is going to be homework is to start like amassing them. Literally like create a Google Doc and then every page just have one of these as the headline and just go ham at looking for them and put them in. It will just make things so much, so much easier. In terms of the practice, if you want to put this into practice, like you launch a direct offer campaign out there and you're just going to come up with like campaign a separate campaign to retarget your like engagement or retarget your audience with this type of stuff to create like trust well, like what you should put this in your original campaign Dude, like no, power offer like power power offer framework that like you had we help coaches consultants service providers and we have worked with like this many people generated this many so the only thing as well is that, especially with that is like Everyone says that. I mean, I was like, oh, cool. I'm going to go back to testing, and I tested using those frameworks. I'm like, but like, everyone's saying that. I'm not anything mm. now. I'm mm. going back a step, trying to put myself back into a pool of market, of, in market sophistication. So it's like, cool. Why 69.5% of coaches and consultants don't achieve their business goals? Mm -hmm. uh, That's just a number. Of that. You know what I mean? Like, if I could go and pull the data on that, and then be like, cool. There's a there's a statistic that's like small businesses that spend less than X are never going to achieve Y because of Z. Like, cool. How can I bring that into a marketing campaign? Just different angle. We just approach it's it like, different. So it's based on the proof element. Sure. Right. Gotcha. Like it might be like logical arguments. Like, cool. Facebook sucks. Logical. Everyone can agree with that, right? At some point in time, Facebook sucks. This would be terrible. News items, if it's something that comes out in the news that's around your business and whatnot, like there's a reason why even on that be? probably dramatic demonstration, like everyone's painting IRS 14, for example, in Facebook as an apocalypse. Like every ad that's about it, there's like a guy with like a mask on and he's like climbing out of the the the, uh, the abyss and like all different things like that. They're making it a very big dramatic response and demonstration for what really is it's like, hey, cool, just like put your tracking on properly. It's really what it is. But they, they dramatize it and say, oh, cool, they must be right. I feel like it's a big, heavy effort. Of course it's going to be like that. Make sense? Cool. Any questions on that? No? Good. Sweet. Cool. So, your homework. So this is going to really help us going into Friday, right? Tomorrow we've got Greg, which is going to be epic. And then we're going to do some hot seating. So if you guys do have a problem, question, concern that you want a hot seat, what we're going to have is uh, like similar to last time, we'll have little <laughs> cards for you guys. So you're going to get the benefit of not just whatever I say, but every single person in the audience will be able to fill in those cards, leave some feedback for you if they have it. So that number one, we can get through things rapid fire. But number two, you can get the feedback of people that are not inside the glass like you are. They're outside of it looking in. And the best and one of the best things is that Everyone, even if you have a similar business, is a completely different business, different niche, different angle, different person that you serve, which means that none of us have the preconceived ideas you have about your business. None of us have the limiting beliefs that you have around your business. So we can just be like, oh, cool, why don't you just do that? Why don't you just do this? And it will be a completely different viewpoint from yourself because we're separated out in a different perspective. That makes sense? Cool. So we want you guys to assess your current marketing, what's going on, confirm the level of awareness, confirm the level of sophistication, and confirm what proof you need. Now, I'm not saying that like just applying these things immediately overnight are going to completely shift the marketing and you're going to get leads for like a dollar and things like that. That's not what this is for. But this is for, as I mentioned before, that game of golf is like, cool, how much further can we get our drive? How much further can we get our drive so that our sales is just a simple putt in rather than being like, cool, I have to have 10, 10 shots on a par three, right? Part three, if anyone doesn't play golf, means three hits to get to the ball in the hole. We want to make it as close as possible. Make sense for everyone? Yeah. 
Cool. So what I want you guys to do is like to jot these down, but just start thinking. We'll give you guys like a couple minutes here and then we will break for lunch. Is that already like good or am I ahead of time? That's ready at that. Cool. Then don't take a few minutes. Do that tonight. Think about these things and that's what I want you guys to come in with tomorrow. Remember social media competition and tomorrow like don't necessarily bring your P&Ls in, but have a think of what are some of the big questions you have around finance and the structure of finances in your business. Because Greg is an absolute gun and um, I, every time I listen to him talk about finances and positioning of them, it just gives me a whole better, whole much more insight and whole new viewpoint on finances and whatnot as well. So what we will do now then is give yourselves a round of applause. For being and we will now break for lunch. So after this, you guys, uh, if you want to leave any papers and books, that should be okay just to leave them in the room. But anything that you want to take with you, well, you can leave it in for now, but just come and grab it before you go. I wouldn't leave any too much valuable things around. Um, yeah, these Hilton guys, who knows what they do after hours. And Nitty will put on some beautiful walkout music for everyone. <laughs>